Hey guys, I'm gonna go over a little tutorial for you guys for overhead holds. Uh, we, uh, this is something we do pretty commonly here. I wanna be super clear on, on how we approach this. We approach this from a successful position only, okay? We are not getting in, we're, that's the big thing takeaway I want you guys to learn from this is, is that your position overhead it's it's like the worst case scenario even when you're in a really amazing like one of the strongest positions a human body can be in is a an olympic snatch right and that's really because of this foot position here but also this foot position is the same thing as really powerful baseball swing it's the same as a great big punch it's it's not a coincidence that this lower body split position okay and so we're going to get to why that's so valuable overhead the big thing is, is when I get overhead for a lot, I, because I'm human and I spend a lot of time overhead pressing and I have historically, and for all of you that are prepping, you're gonna spend a lot of time overhead, whether it's swimming, obstacle courses, right? Uh, Pull-ups, whatever it may be, pressing overhead, you're gonna spend a lot of time overhead. So what would I do is what we, we have such a common theme when guys come in here is they are trying to get their, as they get overhead and they get to about this position here, like when you basically put a diamond over your head, most people when they get to this position over here, as I begin to extend my arms overhead, my lacking of shoulder mobility caused by a couple things, shoulders, lats, tricep tightness, things like that, okay, common things that are appropriate for athletes. When I start getting overhead and I start extending, instead of getting the mobility out of my shoulder, I start taking it from my rib cage. And so now I've got this really big arch in my rib cage, right? I got this big, I think it's called lordosis of my spine now, way bigger than it needs to be, okay? And then I have my pelvis is tilted forward. I'm working for tips, I'm overhead, okay? So we need to eliminate that position and get overhead. So the takeaway on this is choose what we are working with the 45 pound plate. We specifically have chosen iron grip for, for this reason. The diameter of the inside of this is pretty similar in its makeup of what you're gonna have to have overhead, whether it's your rock, a log, it puts us, it puts you in this position overhead, okay? Not super wide. We have the option to go wide, but the idea with this is guys, as I get overhead, even for me, you can see that top rib cage, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this weight down, get to that diamond position. I'm gonna squeeze my glutes. And as I extend overhead, I have to squeeze my glutes even more to offset the tension from my rib cage, right? So as I go overhead, my glute contraction is commensurate. Now I get here and I'm really holding isometrically and I start to shake. That is a, that, that shudder that's happened is that neurological shudder. Are, are, I'm doing it on purpose. I'm kind of shaking. So, but once you get overhead and people start shaking, a lot of that, we can offset that shaking by doing two things. One, focus on clamping down my glutes. And if that becomes a problem, we go into that really strong split position. If I drop my foot back while holding my glutes, I really can maintain a good rib position. Right? And I can start working as, I, as my rib position improves here, I can start bringing that foot forward. Eventually, now I'm vertical, glutes are contracted, and my biceps or my humerus are running next to my ears, okay? So the big takeaway is, I, for me, I go from the ground up, like kind of a, credit, a bit of a flight check. Whenever I go overhead, the first thing I do is make sure that my feet are symmetrical, whether I'm here or I'm in a nice symmetrical drop position here, split position, right? From there, as I work up, I'm making sure my pelvis isn't forward. I fire my glutes to get my hips under me and that drops my rib cage over my glutes. Okay, over my ribs, I'm sorry. So over my hips, ribs over hips. Once I'm ribs over hips, my, as I extend, my hips and ribs want to open up. So I offset that opening up by flexing my glutes. So as I go ahead up, this won't open up because I'm contracting this side at a greater rate than I'm getting overhead, okay? So that's the big takeaway is I'm looking in the mirror 
to make sure this rib isn't showing. This rib is back, okay? Anytime you're overhead, if we have a hard time with that rib flaring, drop that foot back, okay? And as that gets tired, we just switch, okay? We keep switching. Eventually, your shoulders will give out and they should, okay? And once they give out, give it a rest, okay? Because again, your glutes should be stable. Your, your shoulders will, will get weak sooner and that's okay. But as we stay ahead of this progression, you'll see your shoulders get stronger and stronger overhead.